Good morning. It's still morning once again. I'm, as always, Sam Jaffe. Now, how many of you have been to the Great Lakes recently? Beach, boating, something like that? Yeah, good stuff. When you were on the beach, if you were, see something like that? Bunch of these shells all over the place, kind of sharp, cut up your feet a little bit. Well, if you do see these, those are zebra mussels, most likely. They could be regular uh, native mussels. But most likely, if they're in that high a quantity, those are zebra mussels. Now, zebra mussels, they can damage boats, intake pipes, waterways. Take a bunch of nutrients out of the water, they do a lot of bad things. They are one of many, many invasives that are not only plaguing the lakes, but the land as well. Now, during this speech, I'm going to talk to you about zebra mussels, clearly, and why as Great Lakes residents we should try to um, try to stop these invasive species. I'm from Ohio. I assume I think most of you are from Michigan. I'm from I'm from uh, about an hour away from Lake Erie, so I see these things all the time. Now, there's not much you can really do directly. I mean, look how many of these things there are. You can't go around with a hammer smashing all of them. But you can uh, call your representative, join an environmental group to lobby those representatives, and maybe they can allocate some more money that might be able to stop these things. Now, what's a zebra mussel? It's that thing. It looks kind of like it has those nice little zebra stripes. That's maybe the size of a half dollar. Now, it's a freshwater mollusk. It's a mollusk. It's uh, kind of like a shellfish. It uh, filter feeds, sucks in water, takes all the nutrients out of it, spits it all out. Now they um, they come from uh, the former Soviet republics around the Balkans. They got here in ballast water. Basically, what ballast water is: boat comes in, unloads all its crap, uh, all its all its cargo, and in order to stay balanced, because it loses a lot of weight, so it'll float higher. And stay, in order to stay balanced, it takes on water to lower itself. When it takes on this water, it takes on everything in the water. Fish, nutrients, and of course our friendly zebra mussels. Now, looking at this map, this is actually a couple years old. But this, this is now where they're found. All of those little red dots have, are where they've been found. All up the Mississippi through some of the tributaries, and you can't even see Michigan. There are so many red dots around Michigan and Ohio, you can hardly see them. Now why are they a problem? They take food away from natives. They grow really fast. They suck up a lot of food. Native mollusks can't keep up. Native fish that, that also feed on the same things, they can't keep up. So those populations pretty well get destroyed. They also reproduce really, really, really fast. And since they reproduce really fast, they, they pretty much just latch on to anything. They can damage rock outcrafts. As I said earlier, boats, shorelines. That shoreline looked pretty nasty. You probably didn't want to, would, wouldn't ever want to go swimming there. And uh, they can also clog intake pipes. Everything, all the pipes that bring water from the Great Lakes to industry, industry or drinking water, those pipes can get clogged because these things just like to sit there and suck up all the nutrients. What can be done with these things? Well, there are only a few things you can really do on a large scale. They're nearly impossible to kill. Um, best way to kill them is poison the whole water supply. If you do that, you're poisoning everything else, including uh, that big fishing industry that we have in Great Lakes. You can dredge them up, which basically you run a big vacuum cleaner on the bottom of the water, throw them all into a pit, but they grow so fast and they reproduce so fast they'll just come right back. So basically they're kind of here to stay, we're kind of stuck with them. However, we can work to keep some of these other, some other invasive species out. These things have been here for 30, 40 years. However, some more things are on their way, not here yet, like the Asian carp. Lots of recent talk about what the Asian carp's been doing and how, it can, how badly it can hurt the Great Lakes region. Why? Um, first, that's what an Asian carp looks like. That's actually a small one. That thing probably weighs about 30 pounds. I've read um, that some of these species can get up over a couple hundred. I saw a picture, I'm not quite sure if it was real or not, but there was, there was a fish that was bigger than a person. They're big guys. They eat a lot. They eat a whole hell of a lot. And basically what they eat is all that plankton, same kind of things that the receiver mussels eat. They eat all the plankton, and the, uh, these other fish just can't compete because these things reproduce really fast, too. They grow really fast. They also don't have any natural predators, except maybe us, if we can get around to figuring out how to eat them. Now, they're not here yet. They've been found in the canals, locks in Chicago. I'm sure if you've heard, heard any of the news about it, we've been trying to the Great Lakes State's been trying to close. Her, 
heard any of the news about it. We've been trying to the Great Lakes states have been trying to close down these locks. Uh, they have electric fences on them, but they found some um, DNA material from these fish in the Great Lakes. They may not be here yet, but when they if if and when they do get to the Great Lakes, uh, you can say goodbye to much of that fishing that fishing industry. Like where I'm from, we have lots of walleye things like that. That's what these things compete with, and walleye just would not be able to keep up. Now, I hope after this, you're a little more educated about some zebra mussels, some of these friendly guys. But I really don't expect you to go out, fish for these things, unless you really want to eat them. You won't really do much damage to the population by, grab, by catching a few. Uh, you won't really do much damage to zebra mussels, as I said, by either digging up, a, up with a shovel or smashing with a hammer. They'll come back even dredging them up in large numbers, they come back. So in the big picture, won't really help. However, you can write and call your congressman, be it DC, Lansing, or maybe Columbus, and you can tell them, please, stop, do something, allocate some money, push for bills. You can also join environmental groups that can also lobby these people, but whatever you do, just do something. Inform someone that has more money and more ability to stop these things. And all the Great Lakes, they provide a lot of our fish. They, I think I saw a seven billion dollar uh, limit on uh, on the fishing industry per year. Pretty amazing. I mean, it's not as much as the cars we make, but it's still a lot. Drinking water. Lots of people around the coast they get their drinking water from the lakes. If you get if the zebra mussels clog those intake pipes, you can't get the you can't get the drinking water. Same with industry. They they take intake pipes too. Transportation. Well, they can damage a lot of a lot of those waterways, a lot of canals we have to deal with, and that those ships come in on. So, basically, if invasives take over, we lose all these resources, all these abilities. Kind of gets screwed. All I want you to do, once again, is just do something. Inform someone that has more money, more power than you, to try to stop these these things from taking over. Thank you very much. Y'all have any questions? Is it just because someone told me to, or is there an actual reason for it? Thank you very much. Any questions?